Hi everybody, welcome to Friday Reads for the last weekend in October. Um, I don't know how much reading I will get done this weekend. I have an essay to start writing um, and researching. It's a thing. Uh, but I'm th for the rest of the year, hopefully, for the most part, I'll be focusing on reading what's on my currently reading list on Goodreads, which is currently about 13 books long. Um, yeah, so I've got a lot of things that I'm currently reading. Some of them have been on that list for a couple of years now, um, which sounds strange, but tends to depend on what I'm in the mood for. Um, and particularly a lot of the older ones are non-fiction, which I pick up and I put down. That's not to say it's all old non-fiction. Some of the fiction I haven't picked up in a couple of years, um, but stuff I hope to get back to. Um, I very rarely actually DNF stuff. So, um, so yeah, so this is basically, like I said, I'm not going to read all of this on the weekend, that's for sure. Um, I really don't know how much I'm going to read, but this is what I'm aiming to read. Maybe get, or make some progress on at least this weekend. So first up, and this is going from most recently, uh, made progress on to least recently. I have issue number 10 of Uncanny Magazine, that is the May and June issue from this year. Um, this is edited by Lynn M. Thomas and Michael Damien Thomas. Um, I picked it up, I'm an, I'm an Uncanny uh, subscriber, well, through Kickstarter, I'm a member of the Space Unicorn Core, and I picked up issue 10 during the readathon last weekend, so I would like to actually complete issue 10 because I'm a few, still a few issues behind, because I think issue... 13 has just come out. So yeah. Um, next up we have the e audio, sorry, audio book of Weird Sisters by Terry Pratchett, narrated by Tony Robinson. This is a reread for me. Um, I have actually read Weird Sisters, but I've I picked up the audio book again during the readathon and sorry for the noise. Anyway, um, picked it up during the readathon as an audiobook so that I could go for a walk um, and I listened to I've actually listened to a bit more of it already today I've got about if I remember correctly 40 minutes left of the audiobook so hopefully I may actually you know, if I go for another walk perhaps I may actually get this finished this weekend so that's uh, Weird Sisters and I love Tony Robinson's narration I love his voice I always have um, and then following that I have my first physical book, which is Just One Damn Thing After Another by Jodie Taylor, which is the first volume of the Chronicles of St. Mary's. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to fit this. I'm actually considering DNFing this book. Um, I am about, I am 150 pages in and it's everything, like it's, it's historians researching history through time travel, it's everything that I should be interested in. It's so very, very English, um, but it's just not working because it's a first person book and I am not connecting with the protagonist. And that is a real problem for me. Um, I might give it another try, at least until I have to give it back to the library because um, it's a library book, but I am considering DNFing this. So unless I make progress very, very soon, that may be my first DNF of the year. We'll see. So there's that. And then after that, we have My Lady Jane, which is by Cynthia Hand, Brodie Ashton and Jodie Meadows. I am, if I, I am 108 pages into this and it's really quite enjoyable. And I was looking for, I've been looking forward to this for a long time because, well, since I heard about it, not a long time really. Um, because Jane Grey is my favourite historical character. Um, it is really enjoyable. I just sort of got distracted by other things. So hopefully I will pick this up again soon and hopefully whip through it because it is a fun read. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting through the rest of that. Then next up I have on my current reading list, I have Sinners by Pat Cadigan. I've only read 15 pages of this. Um, I picked it up because it was the very first Magical Space Pussycats novel and then I got distracted and to be honest those podcasts are building up because I keep not reading the books and so yeah 15 pages wasn't really enough to tell me what it's about it's like a cyberpunky kind of uh, book by Pat Cadigan um, 
it's all a bit weird and the line between humanity and technology is a bit blurred. This is the Arthur C. Clarke Award winner. So, you know, I do want to pick this up and actually properly read it. So that's also on my currently reading list. And so next up, we get my first bit of nonfiction, which I've been working on for a while, which is this gorgeous book. This is The Music of the Lord of the Rings films by Doug Adams. Um, I love the music of Lord of the Rings films. I just love the Lord of the Rings films, period. But I think Howard Shaw's score is amazing. Um, it's one of the most beautiful scores I've ever heard. And a lot of this book is you know, out of my wheelhouse in terms of the technicalities of music. Um, but I still really like, it's a beautiful book. I mainly, to be honest, I mainly bought it because it came with a CD with all sorts of rarities um, from the score and like demos and stuff on it. And it has the song that is sung by Liv Tyler, the um, uh, Arwen's song. And so I really bought it for that. But it's a beautiful book um, with some absolutely gorgeous, you know, photos and artwork um to go from the films um you know because the design on these films are really beautiful and you know you pick up the i pick up the occasional thing that i do understand about the music so i pick this up occasionally when i'm in the mood um for it so you know i am how much i am 200 pages through this so which is about nearly 50 percent of the way through so, you know, eventually I'll finish this, but it's just a nice book to pick up every now and then when I feel like it. Um, and the next book on my list is actually The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison, which is an I Have an e-book. Um, I started reading this for the Hugo Awards and I haven't finished it yet. I am 33% of the way through, so literally a third of the way through it. Um, and it's, it's really, really good. It's just one of those books that takes a lot of mental energy. So I only pick it up when I have the energy to read it. But, you know, I would like to get this finished sometime this year if I could. Um, also, a similar book to that is, I've mentioned it before, The Three Body Problem by Kixon Liu, translated by Ken Liu, and I've probably completely mangled that pronunciation. Um, I am... Do, 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 27% through the electronic version I have. I got this um, paperback version when I was at Complex. Um, so again, it's really, really good, but it takes a lot, like really well written, but it takes a lot of mental energy and it's about physics, which I have no idea about, but I would like to finish it. Um, so, you know, that's another thing I might make some progress on this weekend. Who knows? Depends on my mood, depends on how much reading time I have. Um, and then I get to, let me think, this one, which is an Agatha Christie crime collection. This is a bind up of a Caribbean mystery, Taken at the Flood and the Seven Dials mystery. I've read the first two, uh, which are the Marple and the Poirot. Um, the Seven Dials mystery I have never actually read because it's not a Marple or Poirot. When I was at in my final year of uni, I went and I read all the Marples and all the Poirots, but I haven't read much Agatha Christie beyond that. Um, so this has been kicking around for a while. Like I said, I have finished the first two novels and just have one to go. Um, so again, if I'm feeling the need for a mystery, if that's the mood kind of mood I'm in, I might make some progress on that. And let me think, is that, I think I've only got a couple left, if my Goodreads will let me play. No, it won't. That's, that's not fun. There we go. Oh no, I've got four left. Who knew? So, I have, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I also have on um, my list Bitter Greens by Kate Forsyth, which I am 8% of the way through, which is an ebook. Um, I've been wanting to read this book for ages, and I picked it up. And I got distracted and I put it down. This is her retelling of the Rapunzel story, um, but set in hist history, um, particularly French history at the moment, the, the bit that I'm in. Um, it's really interesting and it's really well written. And again, I just need the time to pick it up and read it again. But maybe I'll make progress on that. Who knows? Um, also an ebook I have, and I've been reading this for quite some time, J.R.R. Tolkien, Author of the Century by uh, Tom Shibby. This my dad recommended to me. I am 40% of the way through it. Um, and this is sort of a book that looks at 
why Tolkien is such a still such a popular author, uh, why he's lasted so long, um, and it looks at all his work, different works, and it, a lot. Some of it does go over my head because it goes into a lot of the nitty gritty of um, like the the science of the words and the origins of the words that he uses um, and the concepts that he uses. Shippy was the guy who took over his chair at the university that he worked at. So it's it's very academic work, but it's still really interesting, even if occasionally I will skim over bits because they uh, might cover works that I've not read. Um, but my dad really recommended it and it is really interesting. I just, again, haven't picked it up in a while. So maybe, you know, that's another one I might make progress on. Um, the last of my physical books is this, which is The Tudor Age, A Brief History by Jasper Ridley. Um, the Tudor period is one of my favourite periods of history. Um, I am 68 pages into this. It's quite dense um, and a lot of the chapters are on subjects that I'm not all that interested in. Uh, like there was a whole chapter on like the streets and roads of England at the time. And that was a bit weird. But you know, I'm really hoping, you know, again, it's one of those books I pick up when I'm in the mood for a bit of history. So um, that is another one that I may make progress on. And the final book is another ebook, and this is the one that has been the longest time since I picked it up, um, and that is North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. I, I actually quite like Elizabeth Gaskell. I really enjoyed reading uh, Cranford. Um, I thought that was really good, and... Uh, North and South is really interesting and I want to finish reading it at some point before I actually watch the BBC version because like I like to read the book first um, and but I just got bogged down in like the industrial sort of technicalities of the industrial age that it's set in um, so again that is one that at some point I would like to pick up again so that is my currently reading list on Goodreads like the 13 books um, I'm hoping to knock that number down. Um, I don't know how much of that will get done this weekend because, of, like I said, I have an essay to write, which, you know, I have a plan for, but, you know, it has to get researched and written. Um, but, yeah, so that was my Friday reads for this final weekend of October. Um, let me know if you've read any of the books that I mentioned so or which one I should pick up next and try and make some progress on. Um, and yeah, so have a good reading weekend. Bye.